All right, we're here at the Kentucky Buck Factory. Uh, we're hosting the National Deer Association. Uh, we're doing a habitat module for Whitetail Properties agents. We're in the home state of Kentucky. It's good to have the guys in. Uh, we're gonna learn a lot, have some good camaraderie, have a lot of fun, so should be a great time this week. I want to know that deer on my property are gonna be right here during the middle of the day, and I'm gonna hunt off of this bedding block, this source of cover, because then I know where they're going to feed. It's a huge honor um, to, to be able to do that, to bring them all here, because they literally could have chosen any site in the country to do that. So just proud to have them here. It's good to see the camaraderie with all the Whitetail Properties guys, uh, learn from guys like Dr. Craig Harper and Kip Adams. So it's just neat to be there on our home turf uh, with some of the best guys in the industry. So deer obviously are gonna nip this off right there. That's gonna have a much, much higher nutrient content than this leaf. This is going to be greater than this leaf which already has begun to turn yellow and of course the stem is relatively indigestible because of the lignin content. We concentrate on three things, forest management, field management, and also of course food plot management. And we cover the basics of each plus we go into some specifics of arrangement and composition of the plant communities and how they can be affected through your management, whether that be fire, disking, herbicide applications, lots of, lots of different things, and talk to them about the importance of uh, plant identification, um, particularly identifying those plants that are favorable to deer, whether for forage or mast or cover. And then finally, talking about how to bring all that together in an arrangement that helps increase the carrying capacity of a property as much as possible, but also with a view towards increasing the huntability of a property. We, we really stress that in how you can implement habitat management in a way that increases the huntability uh, and increases your chances. We've got quite a bit of diversity that we can show a lot of these guys or that Dr. Harper and Kip and those guys can show those guys. So just really tickled to death to be hosting this, this module. And that's the difference between Whitetail Properties agents and everybody else is training. We've got guys out in the field right now learning wildlife habitat, learning what different plants are, why deer choose to eat them, how deer move on the property, forest stand improvement. You know, these guys go through deer stewardship one, two, and, and now, like that's wildlife habitat module, and uh, that's the difference between a whitetail properties agent and everybody else. Man, so far the class is just a plethora of information. I mean, I suggest, I don't just suggest, I recommend, if somebody wants to do this, do it multiple times. It's so much to take in, but it's so much knowledge that you're gonna need and we're gonna need to continue on this business to be able to help our clients. And it's just interesting to me. I mean, I could continue to go to these for the rest of my life and I think I would pick up something new every time. It's not little, it's just overall forest management. Um, that's something that people don't think about. And at least in this area, it's all about food plots and how do we manage fields. They really dove into how you manage your forest and that makes a big, big difference. And, and that has been my favorite component so far. And so conservatively, I want to provide everything the deer may need in roughly every 50 acre area of the property. Now, if you think of it in that way, that is how you would maximize the property for deer. Well, I tell you what was really neat. They were talking about hinge cutting and creating a little bit of bedding and you know, to give deer the feeling of safety. And they said, literally, as soon as we walked in there, they said, you know, it is not uncommon for deer to pick up this area within 24 hours of our doing this. And in the meantime of them talking, a fawn jumped up right out of the fresh trees that they had just cut the day before. You know, so, I mean, it just shows that their stuff works. Personally, for me, I think it's more about, you know, having an opportunity to expand my skill base, uh, learn new areas that, that I can promote, and uh, and also just kind of gather knowledge. Uh, you know, a bit of a deer nerd here, and so uh, having a chance to talk to the NDA guys and learn more about uh, how to, you know, properly set up a farm to, to maximize your habitat, 
Uh, it's just always been a real big interest of mine. I, I did QDMA 1 and 2 last year, and I just thought that this would be an awesome experience to kind of take some of those processes that we talked about in the, in the first two classes and really put it into application. I mean, that's exactly what today was. And you know, all the good deer habitat in the world doesn't make up for you cutting yourself and not being able to hunt this fall. Why, one of the reasons we want this to not be straight in for a notch, but come from below, is because say this is a big tree, we have our notch in, we start from the back. As this tree goes, what you want is, you want this tree to hit the ground, boom, before it makes contact with the bottom of your notch. Because what happens if it makes contact with the bottom of that notch first? It's gonna hit, and it's gonna wanna go right back this way. I'm extremely passionate about the habitat end of it, so I like this whole part. I like it that as an organization, we stress the safety end. We encourage people to go enhance habitat, but at the same time, we wanna make sure that they, they have the tools to do so in a safe manner. So we don't wanna just say, hey, we teach them the benefits of cutting trees and doing forestry work. Hey, let's make sure you also know how to do it safely so that you can be more effective at that and at the same time, go home at the end of the day and see your family and go hunting this fall. Well, it's been great hosting this event. Been really excited about it. Um, it's always good to get Kip and Dr. Harper and those guys down here. They're just a wealth of information. Always pick something up every time I'm around those guys. Um, good subjects in depth about developing a lot of great habitat and uh, it's a lot of things we can take home and use personally and and pass on to our clients um, again that's one of the things that I like about this company is you know they live eat and breathe uh, whitetail uh, management and uh, you know helping develop these agents and make some better agents when they know what they're talking about when it comes to the habitat so just super excited about that it's a great event and uh, always picking up new things people who manage land have an incredible opportunity to use sprayers to positively influence food plots early successful vegetation and work in the forest yet so we make sure that we always have an opportunity to teach people the uh, the different sprayers that are available um, differences between boom and boomless how to choose the appropriate nozzles you know, when they go to the feed store or the co-op to, to meet what they're trying to do. Um, make sure they understand how to clean and maintain those sprayers to get the most out of them to help people be the most effective when they're actually applying or using this in, you know, in a food plot application, if they're managing early successional vegetation, or if they're managing woods with these. Um, we go over the different uh, opportunities that are available relative to whether it's a backpack sprayer, whether it's a sprayer that we can put in a, a UTV or an ATV, one that's where you know, we can either have a three-point hitch on a tractor or pull behind with a tractor. So we just make sure that all the students understand the different options that are available and how they would then be able to use each of those for their specific, uh, in their environment, relative to the type of vegetation that they're managing. So far, this has been a great event to attend. Uh, we've actually learned a lot. Today's kind of weather related and we've got rain moved in, big thunderstorms, so we're having to do a lot more indoor stuff today. Uh, still very educational, helps us out. Um, the, most, uh, the most thing I think I took from it was the hinge cutting and the chemicals was some of my favorite parts so far. Uh, I look forward to seeing the uh, early succession today uh, and get a little more, just more knowledge behind what we do. It just helps us in our line of business. Everybody seems to uh, really be enjoying it and getting information that they actually can put on the ground and, and uh, help clients with. Yeah, so the cool thing about Whitetail Properties is, and I think what sets us apart, is uh, you know the home office, corporate office, they are really active and have a really good relationship with folks like National Deer Association. And they give us opportunities, um, like this one is a, is a private habitat module held at our farm so not only are they coming here and educating but it's also helping us manage our own farm our own property so some of the opportunities we get just to help us stay and remain as the best land specialist in the country I think it's just it's second to none. If I wanted to plant you know quote a kill plot just to attract deer to shoot, to shoot them right here at this spot in my opinion there's nothing more attractive than oats and bursine clover and you might add a little crimson clover to that and that's you, you're not going to beat that. We went into the classroom this morning 
uh, focused on prescribed fire, talked about some things that we were going to do in the field in the afternoon, and then before lunch uh, the weather broke and sun came out so we got out in the field, calibrated the drill, went out and did a demonstration test fire um, to what a prescribed fire would be. So we're able to get out despite the way the day started and turned out to be a great day. The most impactful thing to me is to be able to share information and have discussions with people who are as passionate about land management and managing land specifically for wildlife as I am. And so you talk to a lot of audiences that they may have some general uh, interest in, in wildlife and you know it's kind of gee whiz information but it's always rewarding to me to talk to people who are going to take that information and actually put it into practice. Well we just wrapped up the habitat module uh, had a great two-day event here at the Kentucky Buck Factory uh, we had a lot of the MW land team there and then we had guys from Indiana, Ohio, Iowa, uh, Michigan, uh, very well represented here, so got to meet some new faces, see some new people, uh, see some familiar faces as well, and just so thankful for Dr. Craig Harper and Kip Adams and Ben with National Deer Association. I mean, those guys traveled in, uh, spent a significant amount of time with us, answered a lot of questions, all those things you think about throughout the year as you're with clients and on different farms. Uh, we covered everything from fires to herbicide, to planting, food plots, early successional habitat. I mean, we ran the gamut on uh, deer habitat, land ownership. So it was a great class, great course. I'm so glad and so thankful that everybody was able to make it out.